Yeah, I can hear you. So, uh, so what I, I, I was trying, doing for the I was trying to uh, understand, Professor Sir, how come is there some new kind of uh, mechanism or protocol that allows the patients to go home hours after uh, an awake operation? Because this is a, first of all a delicate operation, and secondly, uh, the the procedure is, uh, I mean cumbersome as well uh, for the patient and for uh, the uh, doctor who is operating on it as well. What has changed? Yeah, so uh, let me explain myself. So the reality mm -hmm. is uh, I do like, uh, I've been doing neurosurgery for a certain number of years in Pakistan. And as a matter of fact, when I started here, I think four years ago, uh, I introduced a concept uh, uh, which was called as a minimally invasive neurosurgery. And that is something like you do... Uh, brain surgery or spine surgery, you do it by a small cut, uh, very refined approach, very focused. And, uh, and when you do that, then the patient uh, does not tend to have that much pain. And, uh, if they have a small cut, their recovery is sooner. Uh, and then they tend to go home uh, earlier. So when I came to Pakistan, the reality is the brain tumors were like uh, staying in hospital for like up to five days, up to ten days, with one day in surgical ICU. But uh, with minimally invasive neurosurgery, I gradually reduced the stay of the patient to, uh, for the past year, I've been doing brain tumors, uh, which have been going home within 24 hours. But then the reality is, uh, I also like introduced the awake brain tumor surgery in which uh, patient tends to be awake. And they are talking and uh, you can assess them uh, so that they don't develop any uh, hemiplegia or weakness or stroke. Uh, and uh, when I do them awake, so they're all the way awake through the, through the surgery. And then at the same point, when you combine minimally invasive neurosurgery with awake brain tumor surgery, uh, then uh, what we achieved was actually a milestone in the 75 history of Pakistan, and that was the patient. Uh, now I've basically introduced uh, what is called as day case glioma surgery. That means brain tumors that could be taken out uh, without disrupting a patient's life, um, they could go home the same day. And, uh, but, I think but I'm Dr. quite. Uh, what I'd like to understand is, you know, when it comes to brain tumors or any tumors, a lot of apprehension is there that there could be metastasis of that tumor, or there could be small remnants that still remain within the area as well. How delicate is the surgery, and especially a brain awake surgery, and then you let the patient go? How important is the pre-preparation of such a surgery? Oh, yeah, so that's very important. So the reality is uh, you have to prepare the patient quite uh, significantly. You need to make sure that they understand uh, that they'll be undergoing the surgery awake. It takes a lot, a lot of counseling on the uh, patients. Of course, like the way I am, I mean, I'm, I'm quite like a chatty person. I'm quite friendly to my patients. So I take them through the procedure in, like, I tell them this is how we're going to do everything. I'm actually, half the time I'm like... Uh, not joking as such, but making them laugh during brain tumor surgery as well. Uh, and uh, the patient that I did last time, I mean, most of the patients are doing something. The last time I asked him, because it was like 14th of August, I asked him, Pakistan ka matlab kya hai? He said, la ilaha illallah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is how, like, uh, and the other thing that, there's a two tier answer. So the other thing that you said, like, uh, of course I counsel them, then I post-operatively I see them. And then they get a CT scan of their brain as well, four hours after surgery, to make sure everything is perfect and hunky-dory, everything is clear. If that is clear, then I speak to the patient, I make them walk around in the hospital, they're feeling comfortable, they want to go home. Of course, everybody wants to be in home rather than in the hospital, including me. Uh, so uh, it takes a lot of uh, like preparation for these kind of surgeries. And, Inshallah, the aim is that uh, we're going to take day case glioma surgery forward uh, so that it becomes like something uh, that people don't take it like a big thing that, oh, I've got a brain tumor, oh, what am I going to do, what's going to happen? Not like that. So you come to me, you're going to have a brain tumor. Most likely, in majority of the cases, you go home with minimal risk because we are doing it awake and we are doing it as a day case. But Dr. Saab, this brings to mind, this brings to mind another very important question. When uh, uh, and how can a person realize that he might not be or might be having some symptoms of what you call a brain tumor? What are the symptoms that should make one person, any person, uh, you know, realize that he needs to go to a doctor, to go to a neurosurgeon or a neurophysician and to have himself examined? 
Yeah, so uh, the reality is there are a certain symptoms, for example. Uh, I tend to do like lots of brain tumors various ways. I take them out through endoscopes, through the nose. I take them out through the, this was a, like uh, glioma surgery, the brain tumors which are taken out from the top of the head. Uh, but uh, what happens is that most patients tend to present with headaches which are not settling. Uh, they tend to have blurred vision. Their vision is not uh, right. Uh, they tend to uh, feel sick or they vomit. And uh, that's kind of a vomiting that does not get better. And if your headache is not settling on normal medication, if your headache is getting worse gradually, I think, uh, and your vision is not better, I think these are the symptoms you need to see a doctor. Any doctor that could be, you could go to ER or any doctor. And once you see a doctor with these symptoms, most likely you're going to get a CT scan or MRI of your brain. And that will diagnose uh, what is actually going on. And then from there onwards, then, of course, depending on uh, what they are looking for, most people tend to get referred to neurosurgeons or they see neurosurgeons. All right, Dr. Akbar, uh, are brain tumors or other tumors genetic in nature? Is there are some other predisposed conditions that lead to tumors that people need to be aware of and uh, prevent themselves from? So I'll tell you exactly. So there are certain types of tumors which are related uh, to uh, genetics, but majority of brain tumors that I see are not related to uh, any uh, genetic abnormality or anything. Uh, so they tend to come randomly, and they are pretty common actually. As they say, like I end up seeing like a significant number of cases, especially in this part of Pakistan. I think majority of brain tumors tend to. Uh, uh, come around. I mean, uh, there are two different setups. I work in a private setup. A private setup, uh, I think, majority of the cases, brain tumors, I tend to be uh, doing them, and there are quite a significant number. And uh, I think the reality is, I mean, I'm. I think uh, I need to thank you again for inviting me for this thing. The reality is, this is a big step in the history of Pakistan to start day case glioma surgery because you have to look at the dynamics. You have to look at. Uh, the socio-economic dynamic as well. And I think it was the one thing which I didn't mention. Of course, I'm providing higher-end care to patients, but at the same point, the price point at which they are getting this treatment is much less as compared to if you stay in an ICU for one night and you end up spending 10 days in a hospital, then your bill can go in millions. Mm. Uh, but if your surgery is done delicately, minimally, invasively, and in certain cases awake and you go home the same day, you can imagine my 10-day bill versus one-day bill. So True. this is good for the people of Pakistan, like certain people who could not even afford to go to private hospitals. Hmm. Now they can have uh, treatment, higher end care for their brain tumors. I think it's it's, it's a very center. important it's a very important step in the right direction, Doctor Akbar. But this said, you said that the, uh, uh, there are a significant number of cases as far as brain tumors are concerned that you are operating upon. What are the reasons behind this large number of cases that are happening now? Are the people realizing now, maybe it's because of the advancement of technology that people realize that they have a tumor compared to their uh, predecessors or the previous generations? Or are there some other uh, factors that are affecting uh, people if, and uh, making them develop tumors? No, so the reality is no. The people are getting more uh, understanding of the fact that uh, um, if you're getting headaches, they're not like sitting on it. Uh, especially most educated people that come to me, uh, they tend to go for MRI pretty quickly. So there is more awareness in the population, I can say. Uh, so the more awareness people have, they tend to come with the brain tumor sooner. The sooner they come, the better the outcome because the tumor is of a certain size that you can take it out uh, without causing any harm. But having said that, I get patients from far-flung areas of especially KPK, uh, and south of Punjab, uh, they tend to come present very late because of it's, ten, it's because of the education level. The education is less. They don't they go late to a doctor, and then they come with very huge tumors. Uh, but we still take them out, so that's how uh, we do things. So we do big tumors, small tumors. But currently, as, as you said, I think there's more awareness in the population. I think it's very good to be, uh, for the society to be aware and it's excellent we, that we have neurosurgeons such as yourself, Dr. Akbar, who are here to treat the people and treat them at a lesser cost than so many other places and of course let them go quite early as well. But nevertheless, you also have post-operative uh, post care for them as well and, uh, and ensure that they remain in good hands even once they are operated upon. Thank you very much, Dr. Akbar Ali Khan, sahab, neurosurgeon, and congratulations again on the Brain Awake surgery that you performed.
performed, letting the patient leave in a few hours' time. And I hope this leads to many new uh, procedures as far as the surgical interventions are concerned within Pakistan. So congratulations again, and we'll talk to you, inshallah, soon. Thank that you was Lord. Dr. Akbar Ali Khan, a neurosurgeon, talking to us about the brain awake uh, operation that he uh, performed and a very successful one at that, removing a brain tumor and then uh, allowing the patient to go the very same day. It is, of course, economic in cost and also uh, psychologically much better for the patient because he has to spend less time in a hospital room. Let